So, hey guys, George here. Welcome back to another video. And today, it's a very special one. We've even got the green screen out because it's my Premier League 22 23 predictions. Now, guys, I've not uploaded in a long, long time, but I'm going to have some fantastic videos coming up for you featuring some very special guests as well. So, keep your eyes peeled for those. But let's get straight into the Premier League predictions. Um, let's get into who is going to finish bottom of the Premier League this season. In 20th place this season, it's a tough one to predict because there are a couple teams that could be in contention. But I'm going to go in 20th with Bournemouth. I think the Cherries don't just have enough to stay in the Prem this season. Now, I'm not too hot on their signings. I don't know too much on what's happened in their transfer window, but I've not heard too much. So I'm going to put them in 20th. I think Bournemouth, it's going to be a struggle for them this season. So Bournemouth in 20th. Okay, so in 19th, who's it going to be? I'm going to go with Fulham. So Fulham, we know they are the yo-yo team. There needs to be a league in between the Prem and the Championship just for Norwich and Fulham to see who can battle it out the best because they never end up in the Championship with each other. Um, but Fulham, I'm going for 19th this year. Again, they just don't have enough to stay in the Premier League consistently. We've not seen them do it for a long, long time and I think they will go back down again this season. I'm going for Fulham in 19th. Okay, so this could be slightly controversial. This could be an interesting pick because in 18th, I'm going for Nottingham Forest. Now, it's an interesting pick because Forest, well, they've made some good signings. You know, Jesse Lingard on a free transfer. Nico Williams from Liverpool looks exciting. And there's a few others as well. Forest, I really do think could stay up this season. But I've gone for them in 18th for a bit of a safe pick as well. Uh, when we review the predictions at the end of the season, want to get the lowest score, of course, possible. But I think they might just lose out. I do think it's going to be close between them and the team that I've put in 17th, though. I think Forest could have a good stab at saying the Premier League this season so Nottingham Forest in 18th okay so in 17th place who am I going to go for it's Everton now they nearly went down last year and well they just about avoided it and fairly comfortably in the end on the penalty game on the penultimate game of the season getting that three to win over Crystal Palace but Everton have been poor they've not made any signings or well they've signed Dwight McNeil from Burnley but they've not made any big signings and they've lost Richarlison to Tottenham and not used that money too well to you know bolster their squad um, Everton fans you might disagree and know a bit better comment down below if um, you do <laughs> anyway so Everton in 17th I think this season I don't think they've got enough to keep up um, with the Premier League teams and I think everyone else has strengthened and Everton is still a bit far behind especially that 4-0 loss on the pre-season tour to I'm not sure what side it was I think an American side but there you go Everton in 17th just staying up okay so in 16th position I'm gonna go Southampton Southampton I've predicted them to go down a couple of times before and I think the season well, I think they'll stay up fairly comfortably. They were close to the relegation battle last year, but never really seemed to be too worried about it. And they can take points off the big teams, get a few draws at home against those top six sides at St. Mary's. And they can go away and get a result too, to be fair to them. Um, so, Southampton in 16th for me. I think it will just a bit of a nervy season, probably around mid-season for Southampton fans, but I think they should be safe in the end. Southampton in 16th. Okay, so in 15th place this season. They only just stayed up last year. I'm going for Leeds United. Now, Leeds just about stayed up last year with that last day win against Brentford. And, uh, well, I think they'll be fairly comfortable this year. I think full season under Jesse Marsh who looked to be doing good things when he came in at the end of last year keeping them up of course and I think he continue this, can continue the same this season with Leeds so yeah Leeds in 15th now in 14th position I'm gonna go with the Bees it's Brentford let's see how they do this season they had a really good first season in the Premier League um, especially great start at home to Arsenal 
But um, you know, 14th position. I think I think they finished 15th last year, or was it 14th? I'm not too sure. I think they'll replicate that again this season. They should be fairly comfortable, and I wouldn't be surprised if they finish higher either. Um, they've got a good squad and a good manager as well. So I think Brentford. It should be fairly comfortable for them this season. Brentford in 14th. Okay, so in 13th position, I'm going to go for Crystal Palace. Now, Palace, I mean, they've been fairly comfortable in the last few seasons. Patrick Vieira, I think, surprised us all last season, coming in and doing a pretty good job. Um, got some good results against the big sides as well. I think it's held City to a draw at home. Um, of course, beat United on the last day. So, Palace, again, should be fairly comfortable for them this season. I'm going for Palace in 13th. So, then in 12th position, it gets hard now to predict. I'm going to go in 12th for Brighton and Hove Albion. Now, Brighton could be losing Mark Kukurea to either Man City or Chelsea. You'll know by the time this is posted, probably, who he has gone to. And I think Brighton, they still haven't got that goal scorer who will convert all the chances that they do create. Now, they did have some good moments last year, some really good results against the big sides, but they just couldn't pop those chances away again. A lot of draws, a lot of losses, but still a fairly comfortable season in the end. And I think it'll be similar this season. Hopefully, though, Graham Potter is doing a really good job at Brighton, and hopefully they can put away some, some more of those chances, convert them into more goals, and get some more good results. So, Brighton in 12th. Okay, so in 11th, I'm going to go for Aston Villa. Now, Villa... Didn't have the best season last season, but Steven Gerrard came in midway through the season in place of Dean Smith and did a decent job. Villa fans may disagree, but bringing him for Luke Coutinho was a great, great deal. Um, Villa, I think they've brought in Diego Carlos from Sevilla as well, and he looks good as well. And they've not looked too bad during pre-season, Aston Villa. So again, could be a good season for them. I'm going to go for Aston Villa in 11th. Okay, so in 10th, I'm going for the team from the Midlands. It's Wolves. Now, Wolves had uh, two really, really good seasons, getting European qualification in their first two in the Premier League, and then a bit of a fall off during the Covid year, the 2021 season, and then last year finishing, I think, 12th or 11th, was it? I'm not too sure. Anyway, not a bad season for Wolves. Again, they can take points off the big sides, um, but they can't do it consistently against the teams around them as well. So, who knows what will happen to Wolves this season. I'm not too sure about like who they've signed. I think they've signed a couple of players and that's looking fairly good for them. And um, yeah, they've got nothing to be worried about. They can fight potentially for that Conference League spot as well. And um, yeah, it should be a fairly comfortable season for us. I'm going for them in 10th. Okay, so we move on to the top half of the table, I think. Or were we already on it? Anyway, in 9th, I'm going for Leicester City. Leicester... Now, they're a pretty good side, to be fair to them. Jamie Vardy still doing it. Um, you know, he's been doing it for, what, eight years in the Premier League now? Nine, maybe? He's absolutely fantastic for Leicester. And um, I think this season, again, he should, he should go out and smash it. They've got some good players, Leicester. Bit of a letdown last season, but they could be up there again this season. But for my prediction, I'm putting Leicester in ninth. Okay, so in 8th position, I'm going for the team from the North East. It's Newcastle United. Now, of course, they had a lot of investment in January and got out of the relegation zone and finished 14th. Not a bad finish at all for Newcastle. And then this season is going to be really interesting. They could push for those European spots. So Maximan looks like, I mean, always fantastic when, I mean, teams seem to come up against him. He really does everyone with his trickery and skills. Um... They've got Guimarez, who played really well last season when he came in. Chris Woods up front. I mean, he could still be doing some good stuff for Newcastle. Uh, they brought in Nick Pope in goal. Um, I mean, Debraco was a great keeper anyway, I think. But uh, Pope, even more strength in the squad. Uh, Trippy is back after his injury. So it's looking good for Newcastle. I'm going for them in eighth under Eddie Howe. Okay, so we move on to the top seven. And this will be interesting because the side of point seventh is West Ham United. Now, it's interesting because if one of the big six slip up, West Ham could be in contention for that Europa League place. Now, they're in the Conference League this year, and to be honest, they probably deserved Europa League last year. Um, they should have finished above Man United, but they didn't um, on final day, so there you go. Anyway, West Ham, hopefully they can go far in the Conference League like they did in the Europa League last year, maybe go on and win it. Who knows? Um, but West Ham, again, 
a really, really good side. Looking really exciting under David Moyes and probably another good season of football for West Ham United fans. Um, yeah, West Ham in seven. Okay, so in sixth position, we're moving on to the top six and it's back to the regular top six now after a couple seasons of predictions where we've had kind of West Ham Leicester in the mix. In six, I'm going for my club, Manchester United. Now, I don't think I've ever predicted United six before. I think I've always predicted them in the top four. But this season, it was tough. It was a toss-up between who I'd put. If I'd put United fifth or sixth. I don't think they'll get Champions League through the league. However, the Europa League is an option. It's a rebuild year for United under Eric Ten Hag. They've brought in some good players in Eriksen, Martinez. Um, Malasia looks really good at left-back. Frankie de Jong could still come, who knows, Anthony looks like it's off maybe in January, who knows, but Manchester United, it's exciting for them with the rebuild, lots of good football under Ten Hag is to come I'm sure, lots of goals, but still a rebuild year and nothing big expected of them in the league. I'm going to go for United in sixth. Okay, so in fifth position I'm going for the team from South West London. It's Chelsea. Are they South West London? Who knows? Um, anyway, Chelsea in fifth, I'm going for. I think they might slip up this season. Now, they might may be signing Kukurea. They've signed Sterling as well, of course. Um, he's a really good signing. Lukaku's gone back on low to Inter. I don't know what's happened with that transfer. Potentially the worst transfer in history, guys. Massive waste of money from Chelsea. Anyway, um, I think Chelsea this season... Havertz could be leading the line. Werner, I mean, he seems to be getting a lot better last season and potentially improve even more in this coming one. Who knows what will happen to Chelsea. Kante's getting older. Thiago Silva's getting older. Who else have they brought in Chelsea? I'm trying to think. Koulibaly as well at the back. He'll be exciting to see. Um, and potentially a new goalkeeper as well for Chelsea. So it should be interesting, but it's going to be really, really tight in the top six this season so Chelsea in fifth so I never thought I'd do this but there are two North London clubs in the top four and in fourth it's Tottenham I'd never fit I never thought for a long time I'd be saying that after the past few seasons but I think they'll finish fourth they've got a fantastic squad they've brought in Richarlison um, Tottenham under Conte are looking really good now it could be interesting this season to see what happens, especially towards the end if Levy, the chairman, and Conte, you know, the relationship deteriorates, because um, that's what happened at Chelsea, of course, um, and at Inter Milan as well, I think. But we'll see what happens with Tottenham. Hopefully, they can improve more. Tottenham are looking good so far. I think they'll finish fourth. So again, I never thought I'd say this one, but I'm putting Arsenal in third, guys. Who thought it would happen? But they do look really strong. Bringing in Jesus, of course, from Man City. Bringing in Zinchenko as well. Um, Arsenal do look really, really good. And under Arteta, I said it many times last season, you can see the project and it seems to be coming together very, very well now. Now, they're in the Europa League this season. Um, so, first night football again. Um, I think they'll do all right, you know. Maybe getting to the latter stages, potentially the final, potentially even winning it, who knows. And I think they'll have a strong run in the league with the side they've got. They've got a really good team. And yeah, Arsenal in third. Okay, so it's the two giants of the Premier League. Who am I going to put in second? Who am I going to put in first? It's Manchester City against Liverpool. It was 3 1 in the Community Shield to the red side, to the Mersey side. And I think in second. It will be the Community Shield where there's winners, Liverpool. Um, yeah, I just don't think they've got enough. Now, it's an interesting one with Nunes. He does not look good, I'm not going to lie, from what I've seen of him. Now, of course, pre-season, he's been adjusting, but he's not looked good. He's looked a, bit, a little bit shaky. Yes, he scored four goals in the game, but again, were they the most creative goals, the best goals? He's not had the kind of poached instinct so far of course he scored in community shield as well so look time will tell i'll probably be wrong he'll probably go on to score quite a few for liverpool this season leading the line after Mane's departure but i think that departure of Mane will harm liverpool more and i don't think they'll win the title this year in second i'm going for liverpool so then finally we have reached the first position where i'm going for manchester city of course now, when I've predicted City first, they've come first, usually. So, hopefully, again, City will come first. They've brought in Haaland, of course. Great signing for them. 
they brought in potentially Kukurea, him or him, he will go to Chelsea or City it looks like, and um, yeah, they look really, really strong, Man City, um, they're going to be unstoppable, Grealish looks like he's going to improve this season, he'll be on the left hand side I think, now Sterling's gone, um, again, City's team, De Bruyne, Mares, Rodri, um, Laporte and Diaz, Walker, and then Edison in there, and then such great squad depth as well, Cancelo as well, it's going to be really hard to beat them, and that's why I think they'll finish first, Pep Guardiola side coming out on top, it'll be the third season running, um, yeah, I think City in first, um, so yeah, those are my primary predictions for the 22-23 season, guys, thank you so much for watching, uh, really do appreciate it, um, hope you enjoyed the video, have a wonderful rest of your day, like, the video if you did enjoy it comment uh, your predictions down below as well and subscribe if you enjoy the content subscribe if you're new um, and yeah thank you so much now it's George out <laughs>